you think we can see it? Is it pecking on the chicken house? No, it's on the tree. I'm looking at it. Matt and I come out to walk around in the yard and first thing we hear somebody, sounds like somebody hammering, but it's a woodpecker. And somebody hammering. And somebody hammering in the basement, but we can tell where that one's coming from. Katie and her hammer. Matt walked out there and he, he quit. Didn't want you to know what it was pecking on. Red-headed woodpecker. I don't know, it's just a woodpecker or some sort. Ain't that the ones we usually see? Probably. It's chilly today in the southern mountains of Appalachia. It has warmed up though compared to what it was. I think we're supposed to be warm through Christmas or warmer, not warm, but warmer. And then after Christmas, more cold, uh, cold weather will be back in. Matt told me it's supposed to rain on Christmas. I really wish somehow that cold weather would get here and it'd be snow, but I don't think that's that's what's going to happen. I asked Matt if he'd walk around in the yard and look at the garden with me, even though it's not even Christmas yet. Um, be here soon though. I want to already start thinking about next year's garden. There's so many things to be excited about. Uh, we might get to actually plant more than usual. We'll tell you more about that later, but lots of things to think about when it comes to next year's garden. Matt's out there trying to mess with the woodpecker. I've seen it go up the tree. Oh, I see it now. Is there two of them? Mm -hmm. Oh. And you can hear they're, they're not happy that Matt was disturbing them. You can see it climbing up that tree. It's on the back side of it, see it? Mm. Is that its warning sound? No, it's just its sound. Yeah. One thing that we're thinking about next year here with our steps, I love the steps that Matt built. Uh, we've enjoyed them, but we hadn't enjoyed them that much because we've not been going up and down them since it's been cold weather. But I'm excited about them, and I want to plant on both sides of them. I was thinking blueberry bushes. I don't know, Matt. What do you think? Yeah, I, blueberry bushes would be good. Yeah, so we, we'll probably try some blueberry bushes there and then see what they do. Uh, we loved our raised beds this past year. If you watched our videos, you know how well those turned out. Those bags that are up there, though, didn't turn out that well because they dried out. So I want to, I don't know where we'll put them, but that's one thing we'll think about. I'd like to make a long line of them down where it's easier to water instead of hauling water up there. The beds didn't dry out, but those bags uh, seemed to dry out, especially towards the end of the summer when we didn't get as much rain. So when we were trying to nurse along the watermelons that were in them, we had to carry water and that just wasn't any fun at all. And what that resulted in is really not watering them. And uh, then that was the end of the watermelons. As far as the beds further down the hill there, we never did, Matt didn't do anything to, uh, anything to help us get to them easier, any easier, but they are easier to get to anyway, just because they're not on such steep ground. And you can kind of, uh, as you're walking down the driveway, just go sidling out towards them and, and reach them pretty easily. Matt talked about maybe he didn't want to build more steps, but maybe like digging a digging the trench where that little walkway as you sidle out to them, where that would just be easier to walk in. But we hadn't got that done yet. While we cleaned up most of the garden, back here you can see we still need to do some cleaning. Those beds over there, it's mostly nasturtiums that are left. You can see the white looking patches over there, uh, kind of where Matt's at right now. Those are just where the nasturtiums were at. And they hung on until the first big frost got them. The herb bed, we did cut it back. And of course we removed the tomatoes and uh, we still need to remove what's left here of our Malabar spinach and some of the wild apricots or maypops need to remove them but other than that we did manage to get more of it cleaned up than we usually do our grow bags along the side of the greenhouse there we've got some still got some turnips and things left in them some of them we've eat but there's still a few and the cold weather has been hard on them. You can see their leaves are kind of droopy. But usually what will happen is if any of them do hang on till spring, then they kind of uh, have, a, have a new growth session come out. Oh, Matt's going to start cleaning up. Needs it, don't it? Yeah. 
Our grapes did pretty good last year. We had moved them or trimmed them. What did we do, Matt? We moved them, I think, the year before. That's why they didn't do as good. Yeah. Yeah, we moved them. Anyway, they did pretty good. But there's actually three on this trellis. I'm not sure if you can see that. And the two largest, more established ones, someone give us many years ago. So I'm not sure what kind of grapes those are. They usually ripen. When do they ripen? Like by August, maybe? Yeah. Late July. Late July. Late July. And then in between, there's a really small one, and that is one of the scooper nongs. I had two of them. One of them died really quickly. But um, my friend got me a gift certificate last Christmas, and I got one, you know, with it. Uh, that's what I spent part of the gift certificate on was the two grapevines because once I tasted them, I'd never tasted them until the last few years, and I just think they're the best grape ever. I love them. Just am crazy about them. Matt's over here shaking his head. He don't like them. Anyway, uh, one died and that one lived. And it did actually produce like two grapes. And I ate them and they were good. But someone told me that I shouldn't have planted them. Now, I know we know nothing about grapes other than to plant them and just let them go and uh, how to trim them. And that we're just learning about that. But uh, mostly we don't know much is what I'm trying to say. But someone said that if you plant them, like those scooper nongs buy the other type of grapes, they will take over. In other words, they'll cross pollinate with them and take over. So I'm not sure if that's right or if it is right, it's too late for us because we didn't know it. So it'd be interesting to see if there is any difference in these two more established ones next year. Or maybe if that happens, it takes several years to happen. I'm not sure. Not climb, stand there. Matt was, we were talking about the UPS driver. I said, he's a brave one. He's going off backwards. And Matt said, yeah, I don't worry about him. Uh, some of the ones that come and deliver stuff, we worry about getting back down to the bottom. And there's been a few times Matt had to pull them out of our ditch. Yeah, I pulled out the mailman, pulled out the <laughs> UPS man. No. The never FedEx. Pulled, never pulled the UPS, pulled the FedEx yeah. lady out. Pulled a mail lady out twice, and then other people besides that too, yeah. more than once. But yeah, he he had it going on, didn't he? He just went off backwards. Yeah, he's yeah he talks on the phone while he's doing it, and he, he does a fine <laughs> job. That's don't, how, don't bother him a bit. That's how Matt is. He's such a good driver. I say he could drive a cardboard box. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we're down here at the big part looking at it. This is our the largest part of our garden. There's so many things, um, so many areas that we want to try to amend the soil this year. But, of course, this is already, you know, I'm thinking already, oh, gosh, we better get on it if we're going to put anything on it. We always put mushroom compost and... Um, we use mulch, wood wood mulch, so then that decomposes too. Of course, right through here, there's all these trees that put their leaves down, and that enriches the soil. And this year, Matt was is really going to make an effort to make sure that we till up all the places, especially down here where we had some squash bugs. And so we've tilled it once. Mm -hmm. Need to do it again, just hoping that turning over the soil helps break that life cycle. If you catch it right before a real cold spell or something. Yeah, we need to lime it again, too. Yeah, but we need to do that to these beds up here, too, and we ain't even clean them out. That one bed where you were at, that's the that's the worst for the squash bugs, and that's actually where we put our um, cucumbers, usually. And they love cucumbers, too, so we need to get your little... that has got a little tiny tiller out and till those up. Mm -hmm. I'll do, I'll do it today, but I'm on holiday. You're on holiday? Yeah. Well, I'll allow it. Yeah. It is like at the end of the growing season, you're like, I can just take it easy and rest. And then before you know it, you're like, oh my goodness, summer's coming. It'll be here before you know it. Spring planting's coming. We better get on it. Yep. But there Ain't no taking it easy around here. Oh, we enjoy it, though. Yep. Makes you feel good to be out and about. Of course, we're not going to do any work today, but no, makes you feel pretty good. It does feel good to get outside some. Yeah. You got this already tilled, though, the one time. Got those leaves tilled under and the part on further down towards the bottom of the drive or where the driveway starts off. Yep. Got that tilled. So. These beds, it don't take 
just a few minutes till those. Yeah, I need to finish cleaning them out. I need to clean the asparagus bed out and the those flowers back there. That was another thing I wanted to do. I don't know if we'll get it done, but to move some of the flowers. Those an anemones, September charm. Because there's so many of them, they've just took over. It took them 15 years to take over, but they've took over now. Yep. But at least cut them back, because that looks terrible, don't it? Looks like a brush pile. It does look like a brush pile. Looks like a rabbit that ought to jump out of it any minute. <laughs> I recovery a quail. Yeah. It is always interesting to see your garden areas in the winter when everything's died back. Like I'm down here in the part uh, below where we had the trellises that we were just standing at. And during the summer, you get everything planted and you think, oh man, I just don't really have that much room and I wish I had more. And then in the winter, when I'm standing here, Matt's plowed it so it's all nice and uh, cleared out. I'm like, well, this is pretty nice garden area. It's, bi it's bigger than what I think it is once I have winter squash growing all over it in the summer. It seems like it's not big enough, but then when I stand in it right now, I think, well, it is pretty big. And, and we do grow a lot of food here on our goat bluff, like Matt would say. But it's always interesting to be able to see your garden in winter like that, where you can kind of see, I guess, the, the foundation of it or the bones of it. It's always good to walk around and then maybe something you didn't notice during the summer when everything's overgrown and everything's, you know, bursting forth from the earth that you don't notice that's easier to see what maybe you need to fix or change when everything's bare like this. I didn't know we'd done that. Yeah. Matt's talking about another driver that had to try to turn around and he, I didn't even realize he had, I knew the day that Matt had to help him, but he had um, pushed some of our rocks that we use for a border and pushed them back out of the back into the blueberry bushes. Talking about the blueberry bushes, uh, last year, last winter, we really, really cut back our more established ones. And we need to do that again this year. We're hopeful that some of the old canes or old wood we could cut completely out and then hopefully some new growth would come up. I was watching, uh, just happened to catch my eye, a really interesting video by the MI Michigan Gardener, MI Gardener, Michigan Gardener. He's got some great videos, but it was about blueberries and uh, about how to grow them and how he had recently learned that when they, blueberries turn like these, you know, beautiful colors in the fall, they turn these reddish hues and all that, and that that was actually, he said, was from a deficiency. And uh, I'll try to find the video and link to it down below, or you could probably just search his uh, MI gardener, Michigan gardener with blueberries and find it. But he was talking about he had been to, um, learned from a, like a U-Pick farmer, blueberry farmer near where he lives, I think. And he had learned from him that that was what that meant and then how to fix it. So that's something I would like to do because ours are always like that, always, every year. So I thought, oh, well, I thought that's just what blueberries, you know, that they just turn those colors in the fall like other things turn. But he was saying it's actually a deficiency. I think Matt's about got all the rocks put back while I'm standing here talking. I'm, I'm getting pretty cold. I'm going to ask him if he'll go in and maybe make us some hot chocolate. How's that sound on the wood stove? Good. Sounds good to you? Yep. He's got a big hickory. Is that for me? It's for you. Give me some hickory tea. Mm -hmm. Matt loves to joke and go on, and I'm glad he does. He makes life very very happy and uh, jovial around our house for sure.
Well, I got my hot chocolate, but Matt convinced me to sit outside. He said it'd be good for us to sit out here. And make the hot chocolate taste better. Yep. Everything's better outside. We used one of Matt's little stoves. Describe what that is. I don't even know. It's just a little MSR, a uh, little backpacker, uh, one burner little stove that, that's fueled with little butane bottles. It's real small, light, and easy to pack. Now just keep it in my pack or haversack or whatever when I'm in the woods. If I want to heat something up and not build a fire, that's real quick and easy. Matt said he should have got his little pot instead of using the uh, Stanley cup there, but it worked okay. Matt just had to hold on to it to keep it from s slipping off. Yeah, but... it's just, the cup's just about too small for that burner. Yeah. But it works. Yeah. Or too big, you mean, for the burner? You said too small. No. The, oh, the, you mean that part's too yeah, small? Yeah, the bottom for of the, the cup's yeah. too small. It, it wants to fall down in between the burner. In between it, okay. I see what you're saying. Anyway, it worked. Uh, and of course it didn't take long to heat up milk and we're using I love my favorite hot chocolate is just granny's recipe I say granny's recipe but it's really just mostly uh, people are familiar with it like the one on the Hershey's uh, can but this is postum the cocoa blend it's pretty good too though I like it I drink postum since I can't drink coffee and so um, I like this the cocoa too pretty good pretty good yeah Pretty nice. It'd be nice sitting by the wood stove too, though. Matt gets so hot when we sit down there, he can't hardly stand it. Well, usually when we do it, but the stove's been running for most yeah. of the day, and it's just or two or three days blistering hot yeah, by then, hot. and it's just more than I can, I can stand by it for a minute or two and then get away from it, but I can't just sit there beside it. Right. It's nice though to walk around the garden and think about. Uh, what we'll be doing in a few short months, things we want to do, we hope we can get done. Hard labor in the hot sun. Yeah, it's, Can't wait. sounds like fun, don't it? <laughs> oh, you like it as much as I do. I like eating it, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, Matt likes the eating part better. I love all of it. I love the eating, but I love the growing part, too. Mm -hmm. I love all of it. That's yeah. one thing for sure. You can't go t to a town and buy a tomato like what you can get right here. No, yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. And our Tommy Toes did so good this year. Our tomatoes did so so. Mostly we had more Tommy Toes because I messed up. Me and Corey messed yeah, up on them. Yeah, it's our planted. fault. But the Tommy Toes were so good that we just eat them till we couldn't eat them no more about it. I mean, mm -hmm. they were just every time you could just go in the yard and get like a rainbow colored bowl, bowl full and eat them, they were so good. Everything's good though when it's when you can just go straight out and harvest it if it's turnips or whatever it is mm -hmm. cabbage potatoes our potatoes were good and uh, we still can't can't grow we don't have enough land to grow enough to make it all through the winter but just having enough to eat fresh sometimes is so good yeah all summer long coming out here and picking stuff for lunch or supper is fantastic yeah. Uh, speaking of thinking about next year and how I can't believe it, but January will be here before we know it. I still have some of the almanac calendars, like the ones that I, I had last year. So I'll leave that link if you would like to pick one up. I will encourage you, though, you could go to your, like here where we're at, think of funeral homes, banks, and insurance companies, feed stores, those kind of places. They sometimes have those almanac calendars that they will just give away for free. But last year, for the first time, we sold them to people because, of course, we have to ship them. If you were just here, we could just hand them out, too. But so many people said no one in their area actually did that anymore. Nobody handed them out. So we still have some of those left if, you, if you're interested. And they're like the ones, the red and white and black ones, like probably a lot of people remember their mother and father or their grandparents having. So we still have a, a few of those. I'll leave that, leave that link for you. And while you're watching this, today is Christmas Eve. It's not Christmas Eve, me and Matt are, uh, it's just a few days before Christmas Eve, but we hope that you've had a wonderful Christmas Eve and that you have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow, of course. And what will we be doing on, I think it'd be nice, I hope that if you, if you have time, you'll leave in the comments what you usually do on Christmas Eve. For us, we, 
all the years me and Matt's been married, I guess, we did Christmas Eve with Miss Sandy. Even when she lived in Black Mountain, she would come out here and be here for Christmas Eve. Usually get up and leave early Christmas morning to go back to Black Mountain. <coughs> but then since she's been here, of course, she uh, would come over for Christmas Eve. And, and then Christmas Day, she spends with us, would spend with us, with Granny and Pap and all, the, all my family. Uh, but so we would do that and open gifts with her uh, and then Matt's tradition that he brought <coughs> to our marriage that we've done every year is his grandfather made oyster stew on Christmas Eve mm -hmm. and then I guess your daddy did too yeah he did still does and I just kind of picked it up because I wanted to keep it going I've since found out or we have that lots of other folks do that too I, I, for some reason I just thought it was exclusive to us I don't know why I mean I thought it was kind of strange <coughs> but apparently it's some kind of something brought over from where I don't know but it's there's a whole history of it all yeah. you've got to do is search and I, I did a video last year I'll link to that and you can see Matt's the way he makes it is very very simple and it's the way his daddy makes it and his grandfather made it and uh, when I first met Matt and he wanted to do that I was all for it because I liked oyster stew but the only kind of oyster stew I'd ever had come out of a can me and Pap liked it we were the only people in my family that liked it but sometimes he'd buy us a can or two and me and him would eat it so we really liked Matt's getting the oysters fresh and, mm -hmm. and making it and uh, before Pap died Matt would always carry him a a mason jar full of some or a pot full of some down the hill. Yeah, I'd make a big old pot because I knew he would eat it too. And me and you and Mama, all of us eat it, so I'd make uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of it. But I'd half it with him and he'd eat on it for a couple of days just like we would. Yeah. But there's no need in making it that much now. The only people that's going to eat it is me and you. Yeah, now that Miss Cindy's gone, Corey and Caddy don't care for it. Although last year Austin liked it. He did. He, he ate it. About that. Yeah, Austin liked it. But Austin and Corey will be <coughs> uh, Austin's families for Christmas, and um, so they won't be here. But So he won't be here to eat it. But, yeah, he liked it. But Corey and Caddy are not fans. They, they probably never even tried it, truthfully. We should probably sometime after Christmas buy some more of them and make another part of it so he can come eat with so us. So Austin can enjoy yeah. it, yeah. All them things are good. But I know a lot of people have different traditions. I know some people do Chinese food on uh, Christmas Eve or, you know, maybe that's the day they do their whole big whatever kind of meal they cook with their family. So if you have time, we'd love to hear what you do with your family on Christmas Eve or maybe what your family used to do on our big meal for Christmas is Christmas Day. We'll, me and Matt will cook like we do at Thanksgiving and my family will come. We used to all gather at Granny and Pap's, but now we gather at our house and everybody pitches in and brings, my sister-in-law brings delicious things to eat and uh, Granny brings her green beans and other things and uh, my niece or my nephew's wife brings stuff. Everybody pitches in, in other words. Corey cooks and Katie if they're here or Corey won't be here this year, but normally she would. Katie probably fix something. So it's a joint effort, but it's always a big meal, isn't it? Always a big meal and lots of talking and carrying on and a good time. Yeah. And now we've got so many little ones running around. Mm -hmm. That's Thanksgiving we had. Had a lot of little ones. Yeah. Yeah. And pretty soon next year we'll have two of our own little ones to add to the Add to the noise and the ruckus <coughs> going on, and yeah, we'll just dump them in with the rest yeah, of them. Yeah. I guess when you were growing up, did you open presents on Christmas Eve, or we uh, we went to my grandma's on Christmas Eve. Everybody met there like we do here, yeah. but it was on Christmas Eve night, and we would open presents and do all of the things with that part of the family and then Christmas Day we did it again with you know just our immediate family just me and daddy and mama would come you know mm -hmm. sometime during that time and we'd do it do it that way yeah and then on Christmas Day y'all headed to Georgia to hunt deer right. hunt right and we just yeah. as soon as we could get the Christmas morning festivities over with we unplugged the tree and sacked it in a bag and put it up in the attic and loaded the truck and went hunting for a week <clears throat> good times mm -hmm. Christmas is full of memories like that for mm -hmm. us me and Paul uh, we didn't really granny and pap didn't do much on Christmas Eve for most of my 
I mean, none, really. Um, perhaps Brother Ray's family would do Christmas Eve, so sometimes we'd go to their house, but mostly just us at home. But me and Paul would always beg to open one present, so somehow we started that, that we'd open one on <coughs> Christmas Eve and then uh, save the rest for the next morning. Yeah. I can remember one year when I was real young. There was a present wrapped under the tree, and it was mine, and it was wrapped in a, uh, like, brown paper um, grocery bags. And it was a really odd-shaped thing. And it was about that long and kind of a rectangle type of thing, but right in the middle of it, it had a piece sticking up about that tall. And it was wrapped in that, and I could not figure out what that was. And I kept trying to figure out what it was, and when there wasn't nobody around, I'd pick it up and feel of it. And that went on for, I don't know, days and days. And then one day I was there and there was nobody home. And mm. curiosity got the best of me and I started untaping that thing because I had to know what that was. <coughs> and I, I can't remember, it's been so long ago, I don't remember if, if they ever caught on to it. I had opened it, I don't remember. But I'm, I can remember actually getting up the courage to open it or to start unwrapping it. And finally got just one end of it open enough to where I could tell what it was, and it was a, a rabbit gum, rabbit box. Oh. And then I felt stupid because it, the way it was wrapped, of course that's what it was. You should have known that's what it was. Yeah, and I was into that sort of thing, but I honestly didn't know what it was until I opened it. Well, I taped it back up, and just as soon as it got daylight Christmas morning, I tore into that thing, unwrapped it, and made Daddy get me something to bait it with, and I was gone. Out, out. out to hunt rabbits. And that thing, at that time... Uh, was just about bigger than I was. I was little. Mm -hmm. But I carried and drugged that thing best I can remember. Of course, I really didn't even know how to set it. Daddy ended up having to come, mm -hmm. had to come set it, and we put it in a place and set it up to see if I could catch a rabbit. I was just eat up with that stuff mm -hmm. then. But it's funny that I couldn't, uh, couldn't figure out what that was. Yeah. It's funny how you remember stuff from years ago and you're not why sure why uh, but I think it was just because I was so shocked I remember you opening the present I would have never ever dreamed of doing something like that <laughs> but I was I don't know I mean it was in elementary school maybe fourth grade or third grade or something like that and there was a girl in my class and her sister was maybe two grades ahead of us or something and uh, went to school with them all through elementary school but one time at recess or something it was near Christmas and we were talking about presents and and they said that they open their pres they get up in the night and open their presents and look at them like that and then put them back and I was just so horrified by that I was <laughs> like you open your presents and they your parents don't know oh no they're asleep they don't know and it was just something that they did as sisters. They'd get up and peek at all of it and then go back to bed, you know. Uh, which now, I, now I wonder, wonder it makes you wonder, it, does, did their parents know yeah. they were doing it and just yeah. let them? That's what I was about to say. Now on this side of it, they may have knew more than what they thought yeah, they did. Yeah, they may have. May have just thought it was funny and let, them, thought, let them do it. I thought I got all kinds of stuff over on my daddy and come find out I didn't get much yeah, <laughs> over right. on him. He, he, he knew a whole lot more than I thought he did. Right. Yeah, I remember just being shocked. Like, you would actually open your presents and look at them? <laughs> I was like, I would never do that. That's a nifty little little rig. Mm -hmm. I bought a whole case of these gas bottles. Did, this... Miss, did you ask for that for Christmas and Miss Cindy got it? Or I got it? Somebody got it, but it was a Christmas yeah, thing. I think and it it wasn't very expensive. Cindy. So I guess you can get them at most... Uh, like outdoor type places or probably any of the big box stores too i would yeah, I say think walmart or has amazon some, they, whatever amazon yeah. walmart they have some version of this i don't exactly know what it is but this is this one is a msr brand i think there's all different kinds of brands of them and it just folds down into that and goes in that little box and clamps shut hmm. pretty neat works good and then you need the little gas thing to go with it yeah little gas canister and uh, you can get them i think in several different types and sizes and this one's just a uh i think it's actually butane there is a blended something i can't see it though my glasses on what to say oh uh, well that's just telling where it was imported premium blend f fuel Isobutane, butane, yeah, butane isobutane. propane gas mix. Yeah. 
Okay. And it works good. You can heat up stuff. You can actually cook on it. You know, just a little, especially mm -hmm. just for one person. Uh, you can little. They make little pots and stuff. You can cook about anything you want to, and it works good. For especially, I guess, for hiking and being in the woods and yeah. Yep. But not bad for making hot chocolate outside the kitchen door. Either. Yeah, it works good for that. <laughs> it works too. good for that too. Yeah. Granny is telling me the other day that she just never had known of Christmas coming this fast. Is that right? Yeah. I agree with her, but I think it's because of all those weeks of taking her for treatments every day. Uh, from kept me and her both busy and Steve and Paul helped some too taking her, but I think that was why it just went by so fast, it yeah. seems like. But all the days run together. Yeah, all the days just run together. But the older I get, though, the faster it goes, it mm -hmm. seems like. But but she's doing, Granny's doing pretty good. She's excited about Christmas. She's really enjoyed all the wonderful things people have sent her, beautiful cards and, and things like that. She's really, really been tickled by them, and it's made her... Uh, have a bright Christmas for sure. We went back to get the results of her, you know, if the treatments worked, to find out if it was all successful. And unfortunately, they ordered the wrong test. It was just a mistake, just a mistake. But the test they ordered was not what they should have, so it didn't show anything. So now, because they didn't order the right one, we don't have the actual right one done. The MRI is not going to be till January the 3rd. So very disappointing. And but there ain't nothing we could do about it, you know, just uh, accidents happen and things go wrong. I know uh, I'm certainly not perfect, so I know there's other people that's not either. But so we still don't know, and we're still waiting on that. But hopefully after that one, we'll, we'll find out. Granny does feel like it's helped. She feels like it's, you know, like, she, it, like it's done something. So, so we're just all hoping and praying that that's, that's what's happened. Mm -hmm. But she's excited about Christmas, and I'm going to ask me this morning, all you need me to bring is green beans? I said, yeah, that's all I need you to bring is your green beans. And they are good. They are good, yeah. she can. I make <clears throat> them, and they're not that good. Yeah, and I make them, and they ain't even remotely yeah. taste like hers. I don't know what she does to them, but she does it right. Yeah, she just, all those years of making them, somehow they she puts them. love in them, I guess. They are good. Yeah, she's, she. we all love them, but her... My grandkids and her great grandkids now adore Granny's green beans. So there's usually not one left. Yep. Probably not even one little bean left in the pot. Now that the sun's went down behind the mountain there, I'm getting a little cold out here. I think I'm gonna have to go in and warm by the fire. And I guess Matt's probably thinking about supper and what he could eat. You coming, we got, Fed? We got leftovers. We got leftovers. We got and meat. plenty of them, I think, unless that nerd just eat them before <laughs> she left. Uh, meatloaf and mashed potatoes and green beans cornbread. and cornbread that we had last night for supper so we'll macaroni. just macaroni we'll just eat some leftovers today and mm -hmm. then have the weekend of uh, cooking looking forward to that for thinking about getting ready for the big day of Christmas and for mm -hmm. Christmas Eve so we sure do hope since this is Christmas Eve that you've had a good day that you're watching this and hope that you have a wonderful day tomorrow uh, I don't know if all of you have been, but I've been sharing a Christmas story every day through December, started December 1st, and I'll continue that through Christmas Day. So if you've not listened to any of those Christmas stories, if you'd like to, some of them are just, you know, three or four minutes long. Some of them might be 10 minutes long, but you can see which ones are the uh, little short ones. If you wanted to hear something about Christmas, you can check that out. And I've also been reading The Homecoming, which is a, a more of a book about Christmas. And I'll, I'll leave both those playlists in the description below. So if you were interested, but all of us, me and Matt and Corey and Katie and Austin, we all wish you a very, very Merry Christmas.